Hey, everyone. Hey, bag ladies and bag dudes. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining us for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for spending your Tuesday with us. I saw a comment coming through on the chat beforehand that I thought was awesome. Um, Kathy's here from Arizona. Uh, Winita from Ohio. So thank you to everyone for joining us for Ask Sarah. So I have a lot of things to talk to you about and then I'm gonna be answering some questions live near the end of the show. So um, my first on my outline for tonight is I wanted to tell you a funny story about my daughter Violet. So Violet is nine. She's been on the show a couple of times in the past. You might have seen her on the show with us before. But uh, Violet has a pen pal that lives in California, and all of the students in my daughter's class during the, this past school year had pen pals during the year, and at the end of the school year, um, we got um, a note home um, that required our signature if we wanted to allow the pen pal to have our daughter's address, so we did that. So they've been exchanging letters this summer and sending little goodies to each other. So Violet wanted to make her pen pal one of the Minikins desktop cubes. And I thought that would be fine because it's all straight edges, not a lot of pattern pieces, and I thought it would be a pretty easy sew. Um, we decided on the, the size large for the desktop cube. So Violet was cutting out the fabric the other day, so she decided on this really cute canvas fabric with dogs on it. I'm not sure who designed this fabric, but we picked it up when we went to Ohio. Um, to visit the shop, so to speak. And then her lining fabric was just this red sort of coordinating uh, print fabric. And Violet was almost done cutting out her pieces, and there's not a lot. There's, I don't know, maybe eight or so pieces that she had to cut out of, of each fabric. And when she was almost done, I was like, oh good, you're doing such a great job. Um, when you're done with that, then we can go ahead and cut out the interfacing. And, and Violet was like, wait a second, I thought it was almost done. And I said, no, 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 there's just a few pieces of interfacing. But you know, since one of your fabrics is a canvas, we could probably skip the interfacing on that one and just have interfacing for the for the red fabric. And um, as soon as she finished cutting out her fabric, she's like, you know what, I need a break. And so she set her stuff to the side and cleaned up. And I was like, oh, that's fine. You know, whenever you're ready to sew it together, um, you can finish cutting out your interfacing and then we'll we'll make the project and it's been a couple days and the fabric's still sitting here so <laughs> we'll see how long we'll see how long the fabric's sitting here before she decides to cut out the interfacing um one of the viewers leslie decker also very kindly sent us this um custom designed um her friend is an artist and designed this fabric panel that leslie turned into a quilt and she had an extra fabric panel so she sent it to us I don't know if you want to hold it up and cover your face so there you go it's kind of wrinkled anyway it's a horse and violet loves horses and um she was really excited when she opened the package and i said I'll, I'll probably turn it into a small quilt for you violet so um thank you so much leslie for sending that to us violet was so excited um to see the beautiful design of the horse in the package um let's get on over to danny's favorite part of the show um, where we ask all the bag ladies and bag dudes to be proud. Let us know in the comments. Go ahead right now and type bag lady or bag dude in the in the comments. Uh, we really love the community uh, that we have going for bag making and um, lots of fun chit chat going on in the Facebook group. So you're, if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, we hope you'll join us over there. People ask questions, uh, post photos of finished bags. So it's a lot of fun over there. And thanks so much for typing your bag lady or bag dude in the comments. Um, a couple orders of business. Um, we have a shipping break coming up and I, I'm just gonna be posting friendly reminders during all of our live chats leading up to the, the shipping break, but the shipping break will be from August 17th through the 27th. And during that time, no orders will ship out. So if you need to purchase a PDF pattern or a video during our shipping break, please place your order with just PDFs or videos only. Um, keep it separate from any orders that you might place with physical items because the orders with PDFs or videos are fulfilled automatically and orders that contain physical products, even if they also contain PDFs, are not closed out until the order ships. Um, so we're just letting you know of the shipping break. Um, we're just trying to bypass any hiccups and make sure everyone's aware. So if you need anything from our online shop, um, either place your order before the shipping break or um, after the 27th when we return home. 
Um, we've also scheduled a meetup um, because we'll be traveling to Tennessee during the shipping break. Um, we've scheduled a meetup and that will be on August 19th. Um, that's in Tennessee, in Franklin, Tennessee. It's at 7 o'clock um, p.m. and we'll be having that meetup at the Frothy Monkey, which we're told is um, a laid back um, place where we can meet up. Um, if people want to order food or drinks, they can. Um, but that'll be August 19th in Franklin, Tennessee at the Frothy Monkey at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. And we, we hope to meet some of all the bag ladies and bag dudes there. Um, hopefully uh, people that live in Tennessee will come out and join us, or at least close to Franklin, Tennessee. So we hope to see some of you there. Um, before we get into our video for tonight um, that we promised for the court club, um, if you enjoy our live videos or if you enjoy our bag making videos or tutorials we hope you'll share this video with your other sewing friends if you're watching on Facebook regardless if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook if you'll at least uh, do us a favor and hit the like button which looks like a little picture of a thumbs up and likes and shares really help us out so so much because Facebook and YouTube see videos with lots of likes and shares and they consider showing those particular videos to other people that might not have seen them before but might be interested in those topics. So obviously the topic of sewing and bag making. So um, your likes and shares help, help us out a lot and thank you so much for doing that. Um, all right, so we filmed a video for the final project for Court Club and I was talking to Danny earlier and I was like, yeah, you know, it's a really quick 10 minute project and he's like, well, actually the video was five minutes. So actually it's a five minute project on how to make a passport holder out of cork but you can also use leather, vinyl, glitter vinyl, or wool if you'd like. So basically anything that you can cut and leave raw. And it holds um, either one or two passports. Um, and there's like a little folder on the side. And just a really simple project. Uh, we have the templates on the website. So that link is in the description to the video if you need the, the templates later. But I made a couple of them. And uh, a really quick and easy project. And if you... Um, need some last minute gifts any of the court club projects would be great for that because they're all really quick so Danny's gonna share our hi bag ladies and bag dudes I'm Sarah Lawson from so sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my cork passport holder this is a really quick 10 minute project and you can use any material that you can cut raw such as cork vinyl leather or wool so grab your supplies and let's get started Okay, before we begin, you'll need to print out the page with the templates. And to do that, you wanna open the template page using Adobe Reader. And Adobe Reader is a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't have it already. You don't wanna open the templates in a web browser and print from there. So when using Adobe Reader and your printer settings, you wanna print at actual size, so not scaling or fit to page. It needs to pre be printed at actual size, and you can verify that it printed out correctly by measuring either the one inch square or the four centimeter square with your ruler. And it should be exactly either one inch or four centimeters, not slightly smaller or slightly larger. So to cut the two templates out, you wanna cut out to the outside of the thick black line. And when you've done so, your two pattern pieces should look like this. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the pocket piece and you need one mirror image pair. So that means two pieces that are mirror images. So I've already done the cutting and this is what they should look like. And this is what it means by mirror image, kind of a reflection of the two pieces. And let me show you how to cut out the main panel piece. And this needs to be placed on the fold of the fabric. And with cork fabric, I generally don't like to fold it because it creates a crease. So let me show you how I cut out my cork pieces that need to be cut on the fold. So I'm just using my fabric pen and I'm gonna draw around the outer edge of the pattern piece and I'm also gonna draw the straight line where the fold edge is because I'm gonna use that straight line to flip my piece over and draw the other half. Okay, and then just easy enough, um, I'm gonna use my scissors and, and cut this piece out on the lines that I drew. And no need to cut that center line, that's just a guideline for um, lining up the piece on the other half of the fabric. Okay, so I decided to leave my passport holder unlined, which means there's um, 
You can see the backing on the finished passport holder. If you would like your piece to be lined, you can go ahead and cut out a second piece of cork fabric from the main panel and place those two pieces um, wrong sides together right now. Okay, now you're gonna take those two pocket pieces and place one on each half so that the fabrics are wrong sides together, just like that. And I'm gonna use my Wonder Clips to just keep those layers wrong sides together. And I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew the entire outer edge of the main panel using 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and that will secure both of the pocket pieces. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around, including this area where there's no pocket piece until I come up to the other side. when you're done stitching this in place if you have any overhang of the pocket you can go ahead and trim that even with the main panel and then you're all finished thank you so much for sewing along with me i can't wait to see your finished passport holder be sure to post a photo of your finished project in my facebook group and remember if i can do it so can you all right so as you can see that was really fast and easy um, we saw a few questions coming through uh, regarding the video so i just wanted to answer those right off the bat cheryl's asking do you think it would be too thick with the liner? Um, for my machine, I'd certainly be able to sew a liner. So right over here, just cut two main panels. Um, I don't know about other machines, but I think for most machines, having a, a lining would be completely doable. And I saw one more. Um, Margie wants to know uh, what color of cork this is. So this is the rose gold. So it's kind of, kind of got like a pearlescent finish to it, which is why it looks a little bit shiny. And then this one's the Hawaiian cork, which I chose this for the passport holder because I thought it, I've never been to Hawaii, but it would be really cool to go someday. So um, yeah, this was the Hawaiian print of cork. Um, Susan says, if you don't have a Teflon foot, can you still sew with cork? So um, the thing about the cork fabric is depending on where you live and the humidity, um, some times of the year I can sew cork with just my regular sewing machine foot. But I noticed when I was sewing the, the rose gold passport cover the other day that it was kind of uh, dragging a little bit. So I switched out to my Teflon foot. So if you don't have a Teflon foot, you can use a walking foot instead. It will um, give you the same outcome as far as sewing. Um, Colleen says, what is the foot you were using? Yeah, that was my Teflon foot. Um, it's actually on my, my machine still. Otherwise, I would pull it out and show it to you. Um, it's just got sort of, it, instead of the white foot, it just, uh, sorry, instead of the metal foot, it just looks white. And that Teflon just helps it glide across um, fabrics like leather or vinyl without sticking to them. Because the regular foot, because it's metal, um, sometimes sticks to those on. fabrics. Yeah. Someone asked, does, does this just slide in? Yeah, you oh, put the them. numbers. Sorry, don't show our passport number. You should have used something else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or blocked it or something. I felt it should be like a, an accurate uh, you representation. You put a piece of tape over it or something. It's okay. Nobody saw the number. I was just warning you. <laughs> uh huh. All right, um, so let's get over to Danny's picks of the week. Uh, Danny, if you wanna explain why you chose these pictures and, and what's in the I'd pictures. I'd like to stick with that theme of like in the wild, not necessarily in the wild, like out in the streets, which is nice, but it's also nice to see a person holding the bag, you know, identifying who this person is, putting a face to a name, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. And those people I saw this past week are, well, you don't see her face, but that's her granddaughter's face, and that's Carrie. She gave her daughter an uh, emblem backpack, or her granddaughter an emblem backpack for her birthday, and she was super surprised. And then we have Iris, who made an, a cool Oreo bag. I don't know if that's leather or um, 
Vinyl. Vegan le leather. Vinyl. Yeah. And we have our great Michelle here. Who's got, um, Sarah, what bag Lucky, is that? Lucky Denver Mint. I All right, you got Michelle me on that said, one. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the bags from the books. <laughs> and we that's a Renegade bag from Nancy. And she's got a really cool quilt there, too. I didn't. There was another picture she was holding her quilt better, but great combination. I love the colors of the fabrics and stuff. And that was all of them. So we, we pull these photos usually from the Facebook group. So um, we really love that people post photos of their finished projects in the group. We realize not everyone's on Facebook. So um, from time to time, I do get emails of people that are not on Facebook or YouTube but would like to share their photos. So um, if that's you, feel free to email me anytime. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com, sarah with no H. And we just love seeing the, the photos of the finished bags, right? Yes. There's some funny comments. It's a combination. Uh, Penny says, can you have a class in Hawaii, maybe maybe in Outer Islands? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Then there's no. Going to teach in Hawaii. Uh, Nikki says, class in Hawaii equals business expense equals tax write-off. <laughs> I like that, too. <laughs> Would you ever want to go to Hawaii? I don't know if Absolutely. we ever talked about Hawaii. Yeah? I love Hawaii. Um, all right, so if you have any questions for me, go ahead and type those in the comments. Now I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if it's about sewing, if it's about making bags or about certain tools, go ahead and ask in the, the comments. Um, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that we finally, I know it's been a long time and people ask about my wool pressing mat all the time, but we finally got um, some mats in stock and they're in three different sizes. I'm going to try to hold them on an angle so they're not shiny and they don't make Danny mad, but... Um, this is the eight and a half, eight and a half inch pressing mat. This is 13 and a half inch and this is 17 inches. This is the one I have. Actually, I have two of them and they're um, half inch thick mats and they're really great for pressing because the wool, because they're hundred percent wool, they make your project. Um, I'm not sure the correct words, but they make your project be heated on uh, both sides of the project. So if you're, regardless if you're making quilt blocks or working on a bag um, it's great and they're also great for traveling because they're flexible and um, you can throw them in your bag especially if you get one of the smaller ones okay so let's get on to the questions um, Bobby says so excited I'm free on a Tuesday for the live show I'm putting Sarah up on my smart TV thank goodness it's only uh, one way because my sewing room looks like a crazy lady works here a uh, crazy hoarding lady that is uh, most of the time my sewing room is pretty crazy also we have behind us on the floor I usually have tons of fabric and papers and all sorts of things on the floor so usually pretty messy in my sewing room too roxanne says what would cause my zipper to get wavy after sewing it in my bag it was straight before sewing it in so there's a few things that might be happening um, when you're sewing if you're stretching anything at all maybe the fabric or um, uh, trying to get the zipper straight uh, by doing that um, that might cause it to be wavy if that's the case um, i recommend using a stiletto um, this is not a, technically a stiletto, but I use it as one. This is the precision turning tool, and we have these um, online in the shop, but uh, this metal ball here I use for a stiletto to hold uh, fabric and zipper layers, especially going around a curve. Um, other things that might be happening with your zipper, um, if it's a really big zipper, perhaps um, too big of a zipper for that particular project. I'm not sure what project you were working on, but sometimes um, if the zipper is really wide wider than is needed for the project like maybe a sport zipper with chunky plastic teeth um, using a zipper sometimes that's too big might also cause it to be wavy because there's all that extra zipper tape there so there's a few things um, but if you are not able to solve the problem you can feel free to email me anytime and again my email is sarah at sosweetness.com donna says how much cork do you need for the passport i have a friend going to china so would like to make one for him so um, with those cork passport holders, um, because all of the cork club um, shipments contain cork that was 9 inches by 7 inches, um, I used two pieces of 9 inch by 7 inch cork to make this project, but um, obviously you would need far less if you're just using a consecutive piece because all, all that's needed is uh, one main panel piece and then the two uh, pocket pieces. So just a really small piece. And if you're obviously if you're choosing to line it, you'll need two of the main panel pieces instead. Uh, Margaret says, could you use the passport holder to hold your auto insurance information? I didn't even think of that. That would be a good idea for it, right? Yeah, you could just fold it up. And mm -hmm. is that how the auto insurance comes? I've never really paid attention. <laughs> uh, all their, depends which They're all company different. you're with, yeah. That's a great but idea. You can put your, all your car information, your insurance, registration, 
um, all that stuff. I like that idea because I don't know that I necessarily know where ours is in the car. Everything. I know you know. It's in the glove box. Well, I know it's in the glove box, but they're all sort of like... Uh, other info in there. Stacked with other pieces of paper, and it would be really helpful. Not that I've gotten pulled over recently, but like it would be really helpful if I were to get pulled over, if I could just reach in the glove box and pull this out and be like, yeah, here you go, officer, you know? Instead of He probably would want the actual around. individual stuff. Yes, for I know, but I mean like for. I know, but I mean like I could pull it out and then like offer it here, you know, each item at a Are time. Are we still talking about this? <sighs> um, Jackie says I don't have any cork fabric. Um, would I be able to use regular fabric? So since this project was cut raw, you could use anything that you could also cut raw, like leather, vinyl, wool fabric. Wool fabric doesn't fray. So basically, you're looking for anything that doesn't fray for this particular project. Um, Sonia says, can I cut cork fabric on my Sizzix Big Shot? You for sure can, and I've done it a bunch of times in the fa in the past. I usually try to stick with one layer of the cork fabric going through the Sizzix machine just because cork's a little bit thicker than quilting cotton, just so I don't get any um, areas of the dye that are not cutting cleanly. But for sure, I've done it in the past, and it works great. Uh, Glum says, any idea when the Minikins template set will come back in stock? You sold out before I could order one. I'm so sorry. Um... The, the templates seemed even still the template the acrylic templates as soon as we get some boxes in they seem to go right away and um, we're trying our best but since they're made by um, hand and by a laser so one of our viewers uh, Ed and Ed's wife Robin connected us in the first place but Ed makes all of the acrylic templates and packages them for us in plastic and ships them in boxes and so it, seem, it seems like as soon as we get a shipment of like five or six boxes they're in the shop for a day or two and then they're gone. So hopefully we can get another shipment in soon. But um, Ed and Robin are moving to a different state. So there might be a slight delay. But we do have a brand new out of stock notification on the website. So if, if there's ever anything that's out of stock that you had your eye on, you can enter your email address and you'll be automatically notified when something comes back in stock. Um, Diana says prices on each of the wool mats. Um, let me hold up all three so you can see the sizes again. Um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm hoping these are the right prices. The small one was $19.99. That was eight and a half inches. Go to the website to double check. I mean, if anyone wants to. Okay. I'm so almost, sweetness. I'm 99% sure I'm right. Uh, the 13 and a half one was $39.99, and the 17 inch one was, uh, I think, $59.99. So those are the prices on the three of those. Um, Rachel says, will the cover of one passport fit into both uh, side sleeves? You know what? I'm not sure. Let me, let me check. I haven't tried it. We have four passports, so I just put um, two in each passport holder. Let's see. Yeah, actually you can. You, you sort of have to... Don't remember the front? Bend the back. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's nothing um, urgent showing in here. Uh, you can put the... You don't have to take them out anyways, because when you go to the airport, you can't give them your passport and your holder. Okay. Well, so, anyway, um, you can put the one... Uh, the front and back cover in the, both of the pockets is what I meant to say, sorry. Um, are the mats safe for my dining room table? I actually use my pressing mat on my, what is this table countertop made out of? Quartz. We have a quartz uh, countertop that we use in our sewing room. That's actually our table. And I use mine on the countertop and I've not had a problem. Um, I think the, the mat recommends you to, let's see. Um, if the mat feels damp after use, hang to air dry before storing. Um, the pressing mat can be used with a dry iron on any surface. If using steam, place the mat on a protected surface since moisture does go through the mat and can harm the surface below. So our, our countertops can't be harmed by moisture, but if you're using like a wooden table, um, as the packaging suggests, you'll want to use, uh, what do you think they should use underneath their mat if they're using a wooden table for pressing? Uh, maybe a cardboard box they can cut a piece out oh yeah that's a good idea actually the mats come on a big piece of cardboard anyway so you could just probably save that cardboard if you're pressing on a wooden table but if you're using something else plastic table or anything I think it should be fine um, why are you laughing someone says Dan my man oh. calm down I wasn't even <laughs> <laughs> I was getting wild uh, Margie says what is a strip stick I heard you talk of it but I don't know what it is uh, since you're here with me I can grab it this time because you'll hold everything down for a second I'm going to grab my strip stick, though. I'll let you do that. 
Miss Pierce says, hello from Kinsey, Tennessee. Danny and Siri all need to move to Tennessee. West Tennessee is awesome. I think we're looking more east. West would be Memphis, right? So I think we're looking east, Nashville-ish area. Um, okay, so here I pulled my strip stick out, and it comes in different lengths. Um, but it is basically sort of a wooden dowel in like a half circle shape, but covered in fabric, and it's slightly padded. So let me try to hold it at an angle so you can see yeah, so here's the half circle shape. And the purpose of the strip stick is you, well, for one, it's good for quilt blocks because you can lay the, the seam either right side of the fabric facing you or wrong side facing you. And because it's sort of got a curved edge, the seam kind of spreads open a little bit so you can press the seam really nice with your iron without having to every step of the way with your fingers, like pressing the seam open. It also presses seams to either side and it's good for bag making as well because obviously, you know, it's a thicker seam, but you can still press the seam open on the strip stick as well. I got the 18 inch stick and uh, my friend Sarah Algren recommended it to me. So I thought, oh, I'll try it out. And I got it in the mail and it worked great. So um, that's the strip stick. Um, Janet says, where would be a good place to buy vinyl fabrics? I can only find it with the fleece backing. So we have a few colors in our online shop. Wait, what's so funny? Someone else said simmer down, Danny. Oh. <laughs> um, we have a few colors of vinyl in the shop, just some neutrals, um, and those do not have fleece backing. Um, I don't know. It's a tough call. I, I, I also do not care for vinyls with fleece backing because if you cut it raw, you usually see the fleece, and the fleece is white. So if your, your vinyl is black, it kind of glaringly obvious the white fleece backing underneath I like vinyls that are either mesh backed or canvas backed um, and all the glitter vinyl that we sell is canvas backed also someone asked um, who designed the templates I was looking for the, the Ed and Robin. oh yeah, okay um, the acrylic templates is there any other templates no I guess not so uh, I guess I guess <laughs> they just said templates so I assume so the acrylic templates are, um, most of them are from my sewing patterns, and so they're the actual pattern pieces on acrylic. Um, Ed put together the seam guide for us. That was his idea. Um, also the corner rounding. Um, we have a boxing corner template, and that was sort of uh, a collaboration. I was looking for two different types of boxing corner templates, which we showed on the Sunday show how to use those. But... Um, yeah, Ed is very creative, and anything we kind of throw at him, he's able to come with a solution uh, for whatever we're looking for. So we're hoping to come out with some new acrylic templates for um, other uses besides just ones for the patterns in the future. Uh, Linda says, is there a way to see on your account that you are on the waiting list for an out-of-stock item? Um, I believe um, if you're signed into your account when you request that out-of-stock, uh, you'll just get a lime green bar pop up at the bottom saying that you have signed up for the waiting list. Um, I don't believe that they send out notifications otherwise, um, especially if you're not logged into your account. But I have a running tally on the site and I can see how many people are waiting for that particular item before I put it back in stock. So um, I guess that's my short answer for that. Um, it does go through, so you don't have to request the out of stock multiple times, which I tried to do while I was testing it. Um, one time is good enough and, and you should be good to go. Um, Michelle says, will you be selling those sticks in your shop? So I'm not, sh I guess I haven't investigated it. I haven't had anyone ask, but um, maybe I'll look into it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in the strip stick. Um, yeah, you had a couple people interested. Interested in us uh, stocking it. Uh, Teresa says, my husband is from the Nashville area. My in-laws still live there. You should play Fortnite with him and pick his brain, Danny. Uh, Danny plays this computer game. Uh, my kids do as well. It's called Fortnite. For those of you that are not... What? It's, people, I guess, read my emotions uh, wrongly, though. Susan says, I don't get to watch often, but are you stressed tonight? <laughs> I, I'm just sarcastic. So when we're talking about, like, are we still talking about this? I'm just joking around. Uh, I he, guess sarcasm gets lost. And... He is tired. You want to tell everybody what your <laughs> sleep cycle has been like lately? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I went to bed last night at 9 p.m. I thought my has to be good. And probably because I not, I don't sleep as long as other people may do. So I slept about five hours. I woke up. I'm like, oh, it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm like, ah, I better just try to sleep longer. So 4.30 rolls around. I'm rolling around. I'm like, I'm just going to get up. So I got to work. I printed a bunch of orders. And Sarah finally came down a few hours later. And I'm like, I was thinking we're going to 
filmed the video right away when she woke up, but she was answering a bunch of emails, people had questions, so she was responding to them right away. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna go and start filming. No, nope. she's got a horseback riding today, so I'm like, oh man. So I went to take a nap um, while she's horseback riding, and I'm thinking when she comes home, she'll wake me up. And like 3.30 later, so I, it was probably about 12.30 when I went to take a nap. So 3.30, I wake up, I'm like, man, three hours, what, what's been going on? Because I thought we were filming two things. It was the cork video today and one of the bags for the four-pack promo. Um, that was our original plan, but I guess stuff just changed and didn't work out that way. Yeah, so he's, uh, I wouldn't say you're cranky, but I'm not. <laughs> you're tired, you're tired. I don't feel tired. I had a three-hour nap three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no more questions for you, sir. We're done. No, no, no I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see. I see some comments about the strip stick. I see some comments about Tennessee. Um, oh, so Diana says. Oh, okay. This is a good question. I see it. Diana says, "What bag would you recommend for a first aid kit?" So I have actually seen three different bags that I've designed modified for a first aid kit. So most recently um, on Instagram and Facebook, I saw Rock Baby Scissors made uh, one of the Crimson and Clover train cases for a first aid kit. So she paper pieced uh, the Red Cross sign on the lid and the case was kind of like a creamy white color. That was really awesome. In the past, I've also seen uh, the Sizzix box pouch made as a first aid kit and that's a box pouch and it's got a handle on one side. And there was a third one I saw. Um, I saw the Creative Maker Supply Case made for a first aid kit. So that one's sort of like a zippered case and it opens flat. And I've seen that for first aid kits as well as for um, uh, diabetic supplies inside because you can modify it and um, make elastics to hold certain items and there's also pockets. And so those are the three that I've seen for first aid kits before. So um, I think all three relatively easy. There's videos available for all three of those, so in case you're interested, uh, there are vi videos available for all three of those projects. Uh, Doreen says, the faux leather I have is fleece-backed. Can I treat it like cotton and turn under the edges? Would it be uh, too thick, uh, like to make a strap? So uh, depending on the thickness of your faux leather, you can possibly fold it over like double-fold bias tape, so like four layers of fabric to have all the raw edges enclosed. Um, otherwise, I've had people uh, trim back the fleece a little bit so that you don't see it if you leave the edges raw. So those are two options. And a third option is, um, and I've not tried this with the fleece-backed vinyl before, but there's a project called Edge Coat um, from Tandy Leather. And there's also other products that coat the edge of leather or vinyl. That might be an idea. I'm not sure how, how well it hides the, the fleecy backing because, like I said, I haven't tried it for that purpose yet. But... That might be a third option for the, the fleece backings. Honestly, like in the past when I've purchased faux leathers with fleece backings, I've just not used them because I'm just, I was just sort of disgusted when I got them in the mail and I realized after the fact that they had the fleece on the back. So I just kind of either gave them away to friends or they're possibly in the basement. <laughs> Bronwyn says, I get your sarcasm and humor, Danny. We are kindred spirits. Uh, yeah, Br Bronwyn definitely has a, a lot of humor yeah, she's for several hilarious. people. <laughs> um, I saw on our Instagram live chat earlier that Bronwyn said her birthday was, I think, this Friday. Yep, so happy, happy early, early birthday. birthday. So um, that'd be our Thursday in the United States because she lives in the future. In New Ze She lives in New Zealand. Yeah. So today would actually be Wednesday for her right now, I think. Uh, Michelle says, uh, slept for a total of maybe two hours and up at it again today. I think sleep and I have broken up. Uh, it's so hard when there's so many sewing projects to get done. Um, sleep, I don't know lower on the totem pole for for some of us i i think definitely um chris says do you have a video tutorial for the silver cinema bag is the metal frame difficult to install so the metal frame uh, metal frames are usually installed with glue um, the metal frames usually have a channel where the fabric kind of sticks in maybe about by a, a quarter of an inch and then fabric glue is used to secure the frame and make it permanent i don't currently have a video for that but have we done a video with a metal frame before i think we have yes you have a free one, I believe. Um, I know I did a video for Sizzix for for our the coin purse die, and that has a metal frame, and I showed the process of gluing it in there. That's on my YouTube channel if you're interested just to see what the process is for gluing that um, frame in. Obviously, it's a different frame, but still the same process. Uh, Joanna Lee says, Do you know if a te Teflon foot purchased for a brother machine fits on the Juki TL2010Q? 
Um, I'm honestly not sure about different, I, I don't want to give you misinformation, so I'm honestly not sure. But if you ask in the Facebook group, a lot of people that have experience with different brands of machines might be able to help you with your questions. So if you're on Facebook, uh, feel free to ask in the Facebook group or, or join us in the Facebook group and you can ask over there. Mirta says the new silver, rose gold, and black vinyl is just beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Mirta. We just got just the three new colors of the faux leather, and I called it top grain because it has a very um, top grain-ish texture to it, so I really like it a lot. Um, definitely not a flat color. It's got some texture. Um, Sonia says, can a zipper pocket be added to most of your bags on the front or the back? Yes, and we actually have a free video on the YouTube channel. Um, also on my website, it's under, under the tutorial tabs for bag making techniques, how to add a zipper pocket to any bag. So I show you and give you measurements for two different size pockets. So first off, a small pocket that might fit a cell phone about that size, and then a larger pocket for a travel bag. So you can choose what size pocket you need, either small or large, and then I show you how to add that to your bag, and that's for any bag. Carla says, would you ever carry waxed canvas in your I'm shop? I'm scared to post that comment give you an idea for it and like oh yeah Danny, you don't have no room <laughs> whenever i get a new product in like the wool mats or the new faux leathers that we just got he's like what's that yeah you're Are ordering new things because we keep everything in our base our house is super tiny and our basement is unfinished so it's like a dungeon down there to begin with and then we have all this product down there so it's really scary and um <laughs> i would like to carry the wax canvas though because i saw someone that showed me a bag recently that they used the wax canvas on and I really liked it a lot. It's more um, gender neutral, I feel like, for projects, especially for like messenger bags and stuff. That would be really cool. Um, Karen says, do you have a pattern for a large overnight bag? I could have used one this past weekend. I hope you went somewhere really fun. Um, I have a few patterns for large travel bags. Um, the airplane bag, which is two different sizes. I, use, I personally use that one when I fly on the airplane because it fits under the seat. That one has a video. Uh, the Sloan Travel Bag does not yet have a video, but that's available as a PDF or paper pattern. What else for large travel bags that I use? Those are the two main ones that I use. I like using my Cumberland backpack when I travel also because uh, it's hands-free. Um, those would be my recommendations, I guess. Uh, Norma says, is it possible to use uh, embroidery on cork? Yes, I've actually, um, earlier this year when we came out with our easy leather notebook cover a lot of people used cork or leather to embroider it was just a video tutorial for um, a composition notebook to make a cover for it and a lot a lot of people made embroidered covers so either with someone's initials or um, a graphic of something like an owl um, I think I saw some school logos in there too so um, definitely doable for the cork I have not yet embroidered with the cork or with leather but Based on recommendations I've seen, most people were recommending to float the cork rather than hoop it so you don't get the creases uh, from the hoop. Jamie says, can we do a recessed zipper in the hobo? Uh, you can, I don't have a tutorial for that yet, but um, it is on my list because people have asked for I'm that sure zipper in the past. I'm sure you can steal it from the Baker Street, you know, how you apply that. And yeah, but it's kind of, kind of got like a, cur like a slight curve on the top. But yeah, you, you could do that. A little bit more figuring would be required, but yes. Just get some duct tape. <laughs> Sherry says, will you be doing a sew along this Friday? We will be doing, um, it's called, we call it our first Friday sew in. First Friday of every month, we do an online live sew along. So uh, we send the code, we have, I guess, a virtual chat room. We send the code to the chat room 30 minutes before the live chat starts. So the live chat starts at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Time. We send the code through to the Facebook group at 6.30 p.m., we only have, unfortunately, uh, 25 spots available in the room, but we, our goal is to broadcast it live. We had our first month last month, and we had a ton of technical difficulties, but as long as everything is working as it should. And it's so funny, because I tested it maybe three or four times, and every time it worked. And there's witnesses who were here testing with me. I was getting like behind the scenes, because whoever tested it out, I was taking the camera, moving it back out, so you could see our filming area and sewing room, how small it is and every single time it worked and lo and behold the day we're streaming it it's like nope did not work uh, so even if you're not able to join us on uh the live group chat we will hopefully be streaming that to facebook and youtube live and you can also watch it after the live broadcast just like you can watch our social sunday and ask sarah shows 
Um, Danielle says, again, I work for fabric. I have a room all to myself that is 400 square feet. I will ha be happy to cut fabric for you. <laughs> Sarah's jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, our, our, I have to share this room with uh, Danny's stuff. So he's got his computer and his uh, I think a very small percentage. My, it is a mess because I have very limited space. Well, we both have limited space. I have more limiting space. Yeah, but I have more things that I have to organize the fabric behind yeah, me. Yeah, because you need all that fabric back here. Yeah, it's important stuff. <laughs> it's more like a wall decoration. Um, <laughs> Sonia, you just get more and more. <laughs> and I'm literally like in front of me right now, there's a stack of fabric up to my knee blocking my foot right here. <laughs> Sonia says, how long do you think it would take you to move? I'm worried about your live video schedule. So what do you think? We haven't talked about this in depth, but what do you think our moving schedule would be like so we don't disrupt our work, you know what I mean, our workflow? What's the question exactly? Um, someone asked um, about our move. She says, I'm worried about your live video schedule. Like, what yeah. What do you think a good uh, scenario would be for I would think we the most we missed would be one week because we would stay in this house until we're ready to move. Leave this would be the last stuff taken out of this house, and when we move to the next house, Everything will be in that house for us to live in, and then I'll just set this video. This we could probably not even miss one show, honestly, because we did it after a Tuesday show. I'd have Wednesday to Sunday to set up, and it wouldn't even take me two days to set up um, all the equipment. So I, I could see us not missing a show at all. We have not found a house yet or anything. So no, we haven't. A move is not imminent, but <laughs> we'll keep you I'd updated. I'd like it to be. We'll see. Well, yeah. Brown has got a great suggestion. Given Danny doesn't sleep, you could have a smaller bed, uh, more storage in your bedroom. Boom, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> or like one of those, uh, what are they? The beds that fold into the wall? Like a loft bed. Oh, that's a Murphy bed. But oh, you could have like one. a loft bed where the bed, like two feet off the ceiling, these small homes where they have a loft, and you literally have your workspace oh, underneath yeah. it still. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And we, I thought about that before, but you know, it would look funny when someone comes by your house and they see like your bed above your, your office area because you don't have a bedroom anymore. Yeah, I see a question from Teresa. I'm just going to read it out loud for the yeah. first Friday chat. Um, she wants to know if, we'll, if she'll be able to watch if she's not on Facebook. Yeah, we're, our goal is to stream live on YouTube and Facebook. Sorry if I did not say that. I don't remember recall my exact words. But yeah, our goal is to stream also on YouTube in addition to Facebook. Um, <laughs> Sue says, do you realize how hard it is to watch your chat and fix dinner at the same time? It is two hours earlier here on the West Coast. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I know that must be hard. And I'm sure you don't get, even though I'm just answering questions on Tuesdays, I'm sure you don't get the full effect if you have to be looking down on your skillet or, or whatever you're working on. Debbie says, what is the Minikin challenge for August? I haven't decided yet. Some things Wait I, one day. Yeah, I forgot that was tomorrow. So I guess I'll have to decide tonight. But um, whew. I'll post it in the newsletter. We'll actually send a newsletter out for once. Uh, we'll send that out in the newsletter as soon as uh, we decide tomorrow in the morning. <laughs> Diane says, my husband is getting ready to put an addition on for the sewing studio. Oh, that sounds amazing. A whole private you area. You had someone at the sewing. retreat that was getting, I think, the garage turned into their sewing area. Is that right? Do you remember the lady? She drove all oh, the way from I the do. West Coast. Um, I can't remember her name. It's floating in my mind. It starts with an M. She lives in, uh, I think she said Portland. Right. I think she offered us to stop by if we were in that area one time. Marita, right? I, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm I, honestly, sure that was it. I remember talking to her. She was a very nice lady. Yeah, oh, I remember because uh, she said we could stay with her when she finished yeah. the sewing studio. Right, right. Uh, uh. Um, oh, I'll mention again because I see another question. Uh, the first Friday chat is 7 p.m. Central Time, so the same time as all of our other live chats. And then we post the, the link to the room for 25 people that can get into the room at 6.30 in the Facebook group. I see Sherry says, I'm still unpacking after four years. Oh, that sounds horrible. Well, for sure the fabric has to come out first, right? Fabric in the sewing machine. Right. Um, Donna says, anyone that knows how to machine embroider on cork, uh, let me know, please. So if anyone could help Donna, Donna out in the comments, because I haven't personally done it before. Some, I remember they said floating it and stuff floating like that. Floating it. We're um, not, I, we haven't done it. So I just remember reading people in comments constantly saying, um... A double wide uh, she shed. I see that comment coming <laughs> yeah. through. <laughs> like a woman shed. Like, no, it's a she shed. A she shed. It almost sounds like seashells by the seashore in her she shed. I saw a commercial recent, recently with a, <laughs> a she. Gotcha. It's hard to say. It's got your tongue tied. A she shed 
I think it was for Home Depot or Lowe's or something where it had uh, the she shed had burned down, or maybe it was for insurance. But anyway, the she shed was beautiful. It looked like the most beautiful house, but it was small and like it was her personal space. So that sounds really cool. Yep. Karen, we have not moved a much, but we did have, um, we lived through an update on our first floor. Pretty much, I would say 75% of it was updated and it was a nightmare. So we knew where we are going to move. That's why we're not finishing whatever we have left here to do until we move out. Uh, it's because it is. A nightmare for us and we don't want to live through that again so yeah i was thinking in my head too when you said like oh yeah we won't miss any shows because wednesday thursday friday saturday i'll just get everything moved and i was like no no no. we're gonna move the other stuff in this stuff here would be the last stuff to come out here so oh. i'm assuming we'd be having both plates that plate we'll still have here stuff here and stuff there when we're moving we're gonna get a lot of maybe new stuff that for that particular house so we're not going to take a lot of our stuff with so i mean like bedroom sets beds probably all be new uh, couch is probably be new. Uh, pretty much everything will be new, so it's not going to be taken. We may have like one truckload, so we're not packing a ton of stuff. Electronics, computers, stuff like that would be the majority. Of, uh, the biggest stuff would be the shop stuff downstairs. By far, that's going to take the most stuff to move. But other than that, we're not taking a whole lot of stuff with us. I have a great idea. So since Violet kind of knows how to run the shows, you could just go move all the stuff Let and her run it while do all the work and then I could just hang out here with the kids and then when you have our our new house set up like we could just pop over and ta-da what what do you think about that what'd you say you were listening weren't you no I was trying to read comments okay I'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> it was funny for me it was funny trust me uh yeah we're gonna miss our families we moved from Chicago my mom I'll be pulling and dragging with me to come with live with us uh Sarah's parents when they retire uh, I'm trying to coax her dad to come too because um, I think he wants to be part of the business somehow. He's very interested in it at all the time. So, and he's a mailman. So, I mean, he he could retire, work for us, take our packages and deliver them to the mail. I don't know if we'll have door-to-door -door pickup <laughs> like we currently do, but uh, it just makes more sense for us. We're going to sell our house, someone asked. Um, oh, can you put that on the comments? Um, the someone, one? Yeah, Cheryl answered about very kindly answered Donna's questions about embroidering the cork. Cheryl says, you don't hoop the cork. You use a medium weight stabilizer, lightly spray uh, spray adhesive for embroidery, then lay the cork and then put a wash away mess stabilizer on top. So thanks for answering that in detail, Cheryl. Appreciate it. Do you have a video for the arabesque? Oh, that's a good question. Bag. Forgot about that pattern. Diane says, is there a video for the arabesque bag? Uh, we don't currently have a video for that, but it's a free pattern. Um, I made that particular bag with Renaissance ribbons, so I top stitched uh, ribbons on the front of my bag, and then there's ribbons on the handle, and it has a zipper. So, um, relatively pretty quick bag. So maybe we'll get a video for that uh, after the holidays. I don't know. Bronwyn, that's crazy to move that much that far, multiple times. Bronwyn, are you originally from New Zealand or um, Australia? I'm not seeing many questions, mostly comments and stuff like that. Okay. We're also going to be, besides being Nashville South, that'll be at the start of our trip, but the end, we're going to end in, um, what is it called? Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg area, where we have a, a cabin there for a few days, and it should be pretty fun. Like, looking forward to it. In the cabin, they have a couple arcade games, uh, so the kids will have a good time. I think there's a pool table, too. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Plum says she thinks we should stay in Chicago. You know, it'd be makes sense, but, you know, if we need a bigger house and the next size house up and all that stuff, the housing cost for what we're looking at in Tennessee is similar to the housing cost in Chicago, but you miss the the taxes. Like, say, a house in that nice of a house would cost, say, approximately $1,000 a month in taxes alone in the area we're looking in Chicago, Illinois, in the suburbs probably. And versus in Tennessee, the same house, same price, say $350,000, whatever, uh, would cost $200 a month. Times that over a year, that's $800 savings times 12 months, $9,600. Times that over 10 years, that's $96,000. And that would pay tuition for one of our kids to go to college. So, I mean, it makes more sense to us in the long run. Okay. You and wanna... then we should wrap it up, yeah, because I'm not seeing more questions. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, we like talking about sewing and obviously personal stuff right? as well. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, we'll see you again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And hopefully, if all goes well, fingers crossed, uh, this Friday for the first Friday sewing. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of the week and happy sewing. See you sewing. guys. Have a great weekend.